You're a nice guy. I got no quarrel with you. You're just standing in my way. The Sealy Mattress Company presents... Calling All Detectives. Calling All Detectives. Mystery drama from the case book of Jerry Browning. Plus radio's newest, most thrilling game, the Sealy Mystery Quiz. Tonight, after our Calling All Detectives story, we'll telephone some listener right in his or her own home and ask one simple question about the story. A question that can be answered if you listen carefully and remember what you hear. And since the mystery quiz question was not correctly answered last night, the Sealy Award for tonight will be $50 for the right answer. So pull up a chair and listen carefully to Calling All Detectives. Jerry Browning, Private Detective, Confidential Investigations. Maybe you've seen my ads in the papers. What kind of business do I get from these ads? You'd be surprised. Sometimes even I'm surprised. My visitor was a plump, fidgety little man with earnest, owlish eyes. He said, Mr. Browning, I paid a low character a hundred dollars to kill me. I've changed my mind. I want you to tell him so. Nothing more, nothing less. I said, oh, and tried to make it sound thoughtful. The little man didn't look like a jokester, but you can never be sure. I said, Mr. Frobish, you're sure you didn't, uh, well, imagine this? Frobish squeaked with indignation. Imagine? Certainly not. I got the idea from the same situation in a movie. Most engrossing. I said, uh uh-huh. And why did you want to die? The answer came in explosive syllables. He, Joseph Frobish, had suffered from the pangs of unrequited love. He contemplated suicide but lacked courage. Hence the hired killer, the low character earlier mentioned. But now he discovered the lady did love him after all and life was sweet again. I looked at the ceiling and tried not to laugh. I said, uh, what is this low character's name? Frobish bit his lip. I only know his first name, Louis. But you can find him at the Blue Cat Tavern on Front Street. Be sure to tell him he can keep the hundred dollars. Jerry Browning will be back in just a moment. But before you get so engrossed with tonight's story that you forget about sleep temporarily, let me remind you of something. You spend approximately a third of your life in bed. And the way you feel in the waking two-thirds of your life depends tremendously on how well you sleep. Can you think of anything more important to your well-being then than a really good mattress? Believe me, when you sleep on a Sealy Toughless Inner Spring mattress, life takes on new satisfaction. You sleep better, of course. You wake up feeling renewed and refreshed because your Sealy Toughless Inner Spring is so perfectly constructed for correct body support. This famous mattress is soft enough to cradle every muscle in comfort, yet it's gently firm, too, to prevent sinking or slumping. To keep your body in a true horizontal position with utmost freedom of movement. One night on a Sealy Toughless Inner Spring will convince you that here is the mattress to add most to your well-being. You'll completely agree with the famous slogan, Sleeping on a Sealy is like sleeping on a cloud. And now here's your favorite detective, Jerry Browning. Fancy name for an old-time saloon. Sawdust on the floors, a bottle of hot pepper sauce in the bar for those who like their beer to command respect, prices written in soap on the bar mirror, and a back room with a sign that said, Ladies, welcome. I said to the bartender, I'm looking for Louie. He jerked a thumb at the back room, didn't even look up from his glass polishing. Only one table in the back room was occupied. Two men sat at it. One was a small, dark Latin with fluttery hands and a twitch at the corner of his mouth. The other was a red-haired giant, beetle-browed, yet with the guileless face of a child. Both were sitting in their undershirts and drinking beer from heavy glass mugs. I said, which one of you is Louie? The giant stood up, put a hand on my shoulder, and pressed. I'm Louie. Sit down. I sat down. I rubbed my shoulder and said, Louie, you don't know your own strength. Louis grinned, showing stained, broken teeth. He winked at his friend, then closed a huge hand around his beer mug and squeezed. You bet your life I'm strong, eh, Dominique? Now, mister, who you are and what you want? I told him my name and broke the news about Frobish having decided to continue living. Louis scratched his thatch and looked puzzled. Then he roared with mirth. Oh, <laughs> him! <laughs> that fella is crazy! 
I said, now that we're all agreed, I'll buy a drink. Over our drinks, the bartender said nothing about the smashed beer mug. Louis recalled his meeting with Frobish about two weeks ago. Frobish, had seemed, had been walking around Front Street asking for somebody who didn't mind dangerous work. Mrs. Louis, a fine woman, had overheard his inquiries and led Frobish to her spouse. Frobish then outlined his weird request, and at his wife's urgings, Louis had accepted the hundred dollars. The money had come in very handy, but as for going through with the bargain... Me, Kilaman? Not even for two hundred dollars. Unless he make me angry, eh, Dominique? Dominique nodded agreement as he did each time a question was put to him. Now, for the first time, he spoke, and thoughtfully. This Frobish is very much afraid, no? I said, don't get any ideas about shaking him down, boys. It would only get you into trouble. The woman who came charging into the back room was a raven-haired beauty and raven-mad. She strode up to Louis and led into him with a stream of what sounded like French, but may have been Spanish. Louis, the giant, hunched up his shoulder and rolled his eyes. After a while, she stopped, narrowed her eyes, leaned over the table, and... Oh, well, my wife, she loves me. But always she wants me to make the money. Oh, that one, she would have me kill this rubbish and get more work like it. Ah, women. I suppose I should have reported immediately to Frobish, but I decided it wouldn't hurt him to think my job had been harder than it actually was. So that evening... Frobish wouldn't crack the front door more than an inch. I said impatiently, don't worry, Mr. Frobish, it's just me, Jerry Browning. He admitted me, but if I expected him to be happy with my news... Don't worry, Mr. Frobish, you say. Look, up there! I looked. A round hole in the wall, another hole in the window, right in line with a hole in the wall. Somebody had fired a gun through the window. Frobish made a thin line in his mouth. He said, This happened an hour ago. It barely missed me. I nodded. We were in the living room facing on the street. Behind Frobish was an open door. As I glanced over his shoulder, I caught a swift glimpse of a woman, a flash of dark hair and olive complexion. I said, I'm sorry, Mr. Frobish. I thought everything was settled. It isn't, but it will be. And in the meantime, don't do anything foolish. I drove back to the blue cat as fast as I could. But... As I got there, the saloon door burst open and Louie came charging out. I stepped in front of him. You're a nice guy. I got no quarrel with you. You're just standing in my way. By the time I picked myself up the sidewalk and shook the frog from my brain, Louie was out of sight. I staggered into the blue cat. I said to the bartender, where's Dominic? No answer. I said, where's Mrs. Louie? Still no answer. I grabbed at him across the bar, and he took a heavy bung starter out of his apron pocket. He said, With me, it's a rule. I don't mix in my customer's business. Get out of here. I found the telephone booth in a drugstore a block away. Rubbish, this is Jerry Browning. Listen to me. Keep your front door locked. Go upstairs. Don't answer the bell. Don't go near a window until I get there. Don't do anything. Do you hear me? Don't do anything. Rubbish slipped all the way across town. There was a chance I'd get there ahead of Louie, unless he thought of taking a cab. I was out of my car almost before it stopped, but... There was no use hurrying anymore. The front door was open. I went inside, past the body lying face down just inside the entrance hall. I walked up to Frobish, took the gun from his limp hand. I ignored the woman cowering behind him, Mrs. Louie. I said, too bad, isn't it, Mr. Frobish? You killed the wrong man. I tried to warn you. I turned over Dominic's body. He was dead, all right. I phoned the police, then sat down to wait for Louie. The police got there first. Louie's idea of speed was to take a trolley car. By that time, we had Frobish's story and could figure out the rest. It was a nice twist. Hire a man to kill you when you really intend to kill him. The trouble was, Louie wouldn't take the deal seriously and didn't show up to be killed as a burglar, though his wife, nice girl, tried her best to persuade him. That's when Frobish hired me in the hope that Louie would try to get more money and be killed as a blackmailer. Except that Dominic was the one who saw the possibilities. While Louie could not be stirred into action until his wife phoned and told him where she was. Dominic got there first and took the bullets intended for Louie. And as for Louie and his wife... Come on, woman. Now we go home. 
Well, you mystery fans, could you have solved tonight's Calling All Detectives story? It called for observation, and we'll soon see how well you observe. Because it's Sealy Mystery Quiz time. A chance for some listener at home to answer a question based on tonight's story. The Sealy Award tonight is $50 if the question is correctly answered. Otherwise, we'll add $25 to the Sealy Award for tomorrow night's question. And tonight's question, worth $50, what was the color of Louie's hair? We're going to call a Wellington number tonight, so here goes. W, E, L. And uh, while the number we'll call tonight is being dialed by Jerry Browning, let's talk about the selection of your next mattress. There are so many names and so many claims you might reasonably be a little confused. Maybe these facts will help you. The name of Seeley, S-E-A-L-Y, Seeley, has been renowned since the year 1881. It's a name that means quality, quality materials, quality workmanship. What's more, the name of Seeley means the most advanced and thorough knowledge of all the factors that make for better sleep and greater benefits from sleep. This knowledge is the reason why the Sealy Toughless Inner Spring Mattress is made with a top as smooth as a pillow. It's the reason the Sealy Toughless Inner Spring is soft enough for luxurious comfort, not soft enough to let your body sink or slump. Not soft enough to hamper freedom of movement. Telling you these facts may help you decide on your next mattress. But your final decision will be made when you see and try a Sealy Tuckless Inner Spring. Then you'll know that you want that supremely soothing Sealy feeling for the rest of your life. And now we're ready for the Sealy Mystery Quiz question. The listener who will have a chance to win the award tonight is Ada M. Hammond of 711 West Berry. The number's been dialed, and here's Jerry Browning himself to ask the question. Well, Jack, uh, Miss Hammond wasn't home, but we have a sister, Mrs. Mary Adeline Love. L-O-V-E, a lovely name. Uh, this is Jerry Browning, Mrs. Love. Uh, did you hear the calling all detective story from my casebook tonight on WGN? Oh, you just got home, well, that's too bad. The question was a very simple one. I'll tell you the question and tell you the answer. If you had been listening, and if you had known the right answer, it would have been worth $50 to you. Since you weren't, you will be sent an award worth $5. I'm sure you'll like that. Well, here's the question. The question was, what was the color of Louie's hair? For the benefit of the radio audience, the answer was red. Uh, incidentally, Mrs. Love, do you uh, enjoy mystery programs? Mm-hmm. You listen often, do you? Well, I hope you'll listen in to us because we may call you again sometime on WGN every night Monday through Friday at 10.15. All right, Mrs. Love, I want to check your address. It's 711 West Berry Street and uh, Chicago what zone, please? Oh, you're just a visitor. All right, well, thank you very much. We'll get to you. Good night, Mrs. Love. Since the mystery quiz question was not correctly answered tonight, we add $25 to the award, making a total of $75 for the correct answer to tomorrow night's question. Each night that the Sealy quiz question remains unanswered, the award is increased by $25. Listen tomorrow night at 10.15 and every night from Monday through Friday to... Calling All Detectives. Tense mystery drama from the casebook of Jerry Browning and radio's newest, most exciting game, the Sealy Mystery Quiz. And remember, $75 tomorrow night if we telephone you. Until tomorrow night at 10.15, this is Jack Callahan reminding you that sleeping on a Sealy is like sleeping on a cloud. Pleasant dreams. WGN Chicago.